OK. Hello, everybody. My name is Alfredo. I'm a physicist. I work at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. And what we do is to simulate materials at the atomic scale with B DOE computers. So we do quantum mechanics. My group is called Quantum Simulations Group. And what we do is to solve the time dependent Schrodinger equation and basically do these cool simulations. And uh, physics simulations need arrays everywhere. Everywhere, the world is three dimensional, and electrons live in an infinite dimensional Hilbert space. So imagine we need arrays of all dimensions, basically. So <laughs> uh, what I'm presenting here is a library called Multi. Um, it's an array library, and uh, I want to basically show you what are the design principles of this library in this slide. Uh, so we start from containers, not because I love containers, but because I love value types. But we are using STL algorithms as reference frame. Uh, value semantic rules, I want everything to be compatible with STL algorithms. And then later discover new algorithms if they appear, right? And in some sense, this is a research project because it's a search for truth, as Dave said the first day. Uh, but at the same time, it's being tested in, in hundreds of thousand lines of uh, other codes, right? And there is also an expectation from the public that this interface will have element access, referential access, and some expected interface, maybe from people from MATLAB and Python and Fortran, right? And we have to be compatible with numerical libraries. <coughs> so what is multi not? Multi is not a linear algebra library, although you can construct linear algebra from, from it. Um, it is not expression templates. I don't think there's so many, many problems, really. Um, they distract from the real research. Um, it's not a framework. For that, we have many other frameworks. And it's not many other things. So what do you expect from these multi arrays? Well, to begin with, uh, value semantics, plain and all. No more, no less than value semantics. You can construct stuff, you can assign stuff, you can resize your dynamic arrays, you can element access, and you can access sub arrays of, or sub blocks of the arrays. So you cannot imagine how many frameworks will fail already here when you are copying a matrix and they do what they call a shallow copy, and then basically the elements are not independent. And then we offer other things that value types should uh, give. No. This sounds kind of philosophical, but in my opinion, to say value semantics, you need references. So what the library does is each time you take a block or a sub-block or something of lower dimension in the array, they, need, they don't need to be dimension two. They can be much higher dimension. Uh, basically, you're, you generate reference-like objects. And the discovery here, I think, is that we can assign these two uh, reference, uh, references in the language, which are surviving because of like that lifetime extension. So these reference likes are hard to deal with in general, but at least in this case, they are always being marked with ampersand. Not only that, the const ampersand will propagate into all the semantics. Um, <coughs> now, sometimes you really need to copy. So in that case, you assign a reference into something that you know is a value type. As I say, this is a value type. Um, now, if you use auto, you cannot use it because it's disabled in the library. So you have to do decay. Uh, and if you don't like the word decay, you have what I think is the universal uh, decay operator, which is unary plus. So this is kind of the trick. Now, what do we do to prevent this framework instead? So first, we use memory that is already allocated sometimes. If you have a program that already managed memory, then you want to bas basically refer to that. Now, I didn't invent this. Of course, this is already present. What is new here is that we can do, we can mark this and have a tag there that says it's a reference. So these reference-like objects are always references in the program. And that's a nice new thing. Now. To do generic algorithms, I think we still need iterators. And basically, I, I was very careful to how to design them so they work out of the box with the whole of STL. And as St. Parents likes to say, if something works with stable sort, it works with everything, because everything in STL is basically to write stable sort. And this is work out of the box. I don't think any other library can do this. So to actually be expressive, you need more than one type of um, iterator. Um, uh, not unlike std vector, uh, basically you can do one dimension at a time access, but also you can flatten uh, sequentially the array until you basically go to the raw elements in some canonical order. And this is very important to express parallelism in some operations that are really element-wise. And this depends also in implementation of smart plus plus and plus equal. Uh, one is basically sum with carry on your in in indexes, and the other one does division and modulo, which is very expensive. And this is very important to implement things in, the, in CUDA kernels and, and Trust, for example, and also STD parallel. 
And also I introduced something that I call cursors, which are basically some kind of multidimensional uh, iterators. And this is, these are very important for CUDA kernels because these are very lightweight uh, it, um, references to arrays. They have the semantics of iterator, but it's basically a, an array that forgot the size. How much time I have? That's time. Okay, great. Sure.